Hello, and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And uh, we've got a little bit of information this week that uh, is going to be interesting for uh, the end of the week show, or the beginning of the week show, depending on when you're watching this. Um, the Florida administration backs using pay as you throw. How, how did we not know this? I don't know, Chip. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, what a surprise to, yeah. everyone, to everyone in the administration, but not to Spindle City Straight. I know, exactly. And, the, you know, the worst part about it is there are three bags available uh, at different prices. And um, you, you have to ask yourself, uh, you know, what are they talking about and why? So what they're talking about is this. They've added 22 more firefighters. And they kept DCM in the control of the city. And if they don't get pay as you throw, we don't get 22 firefighters and we don't get DCM in the city. <laughs> so this is money that's already been calculated into the new budget, which was released today. Um, the new bags are going to cost you 75 cents, a buck and a quarter, and $2. And... That's a, a 15 gallon bag for 75 cents. Uh, excuse me, a five, a eight gallon bag costing 75 cents, a 15 gallon bag costing a buck 25, and a 30 gallon bag for two dollars. Here's the problem this is a fee, and we need an ordinance to govern it, which the city doesn't have. But the money has already been included in the budget. The company that's going to manage this is called Waste Zero. They don't do anything but provide the bags, market the bags, and get paid for it. Cushy job, don't you think? Yeah, market bags that are mandatory. That must be a difficult marketing. So. Must be very difficult, I, I agree. Um, and here's the thing, because we talked about this first on this show, and we're going to talk about it again. There have been three, three stories on how they're going to enforce this. Uh, only three, though, this time, which is pretty good for, for this administration. Give them time. Give them Give time. Them time. <laughs> Currently, um, the people who throw the trash out are responsible to be sure they're in the proper bags. If they're not, you can be fined $100 the first time, $200 the second time, and $300 the third time, and each subsequent time. And on the first plan, it's going to be the tenant who's responsible for it. And how they're going to do that is DCM is going to have to have their workers be the police and go through the bags and sort through it and find something which identifies you as the person who threw it out. Um, the second plan is to have both tenants and landlords responsible. And what that means is if the tenant can't be identified, the landlord gets the fine. I can see the rates going up already on the rents in Fall River. Okay, and the third plan alone is they're not going to dig through the trash, they're just going to find the landlord. So, if you're a property owner in Fall River, do you want this? Now, we've got some neighborhood associations, and we now know exactly how they've lined up uh, based upon their speeches at the city council meeting and their public opinions that they've expressed. And we know that those neighborhood associations have said, oh, this is a good thing for Fall River. Yeah, it's going to be a good thing for trash control, that's for sure. I mean, what do you think, Chip? I mean, how are we going to do this? Well, I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's going to be a catastrophe. It's going to turn the city into a giant dump because everybody's going to dump everything they can everywhere except in a bag. And if they do a bag, I mean, I think even the people in Fall River, they'd probably be bright enough to put all their mail in any identifying uh, uh, trash that they have into the small bag and dump their other trash wherever the hell they want and and the fact is now it's the landlord who takes the hit uh you know it, it just you know it just doesn't it doesn't make sense in a community uh like this we have a lot of multiple family homes this isn't somerset or swansea places like that i know they said they did it in worcester but i i mean you know, I mean, look at the demographic we have here. We have a lot of people who are non-English speaking in this community. And how are you going to get the message to them? Uh, you know, it's just, you know, but we have to look at the, the, the core problem. The core problem is why are we doing this? It's because, again, we spend money we don't have. And then we have to come up with how to figure out how to extract 
a new tax, without calling it a tax, from the people in the city. We're going to put on we're going to we're going to put on 22 firefighters, and we did it without figuring out where we got the money. So this city, they wonder why we can't run a city. You can't. We run out of a budget. We can't run our budget like that. I can't say, well, the hell with it. I'm going to go out and buy a new car. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have any money. So I think I'll tax my neighbor so I can buy a car. And it's like, I don't do things that I can't afford because if I, if I try to do them and I can't pay, guess what? There are, there's a consequence. They won't give it to me. I, this, know, this city continues to do this. And, then, and, the, and the end result is it makes the city worse off. And it, it is ridiculous. You know, and the, 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 this $3.5 million they're talking about isn't actually $3.5 million. Can you believe that? It's money that actually isn't money. <laughs> well, in Fall River, we have that all the time. We I have know. Money that isn't really nine hundred thousand dollars of the three point five million is savings. It's savings. So, where's the money? Yeah. Okay. Now they they brought down the uh, waste management czar from Worcester second largest city in Massachusetts, saying that we Im implemented this program because we were in a financial crisis, and it worked. Well, that's nice. I'm glad it worked. And I hope it works if they do implement it in Fall River. But the reality is the budget presented to the city council as of right now is based solely on the fact that if they don't get this money, we're screwed. The 22 firefighters don't happen. DCM will probably get privatized. And I'm sure ABC's waiting in the, in the uh, sidelines going, yes, yes, yes. Um, and I already know that I, as a landlord, am looking at what other options are available to me and my tenants uh, on trash removal. Um, so I'm calling around to companies to find out how much they would charge me monthly to remove my trash. And I think that I will probably get a better deal outside of Fall River than I would staying with our DCM. And that's a sad thing to say. They do an excellent job, don't get me wrong. DCM does an absolutely wonderful job. And I don't want to see any one of them lose their job. But the reality is, I as a landlord am not going to pay $100, $200, or $300 every time one of my tenants decides to throw a hefty garbage bag in the trash or they decide they don't want to recycle. It's just not going to work that way. And as a matter of fact, several city councilors said maybe some citizens of the city should get together and file a lawsuit against the city for violating Prop 2.5 because this fee actually is uh, basically an override of that tax. And they're doing it by calling it a fee. So. You know, what can you do with that? Well, I think actually somebody did the numbers and they said it was this, this will result in another 3.5% increase. It's a hidden increase. So now we're up to 6%. 2.5 and 3.5 and is a 6% tax increase. And that's without the other, all the other ancillary fees we have, like the water and, and, and that, are, that are still in the mix. And the problem is, look, you know, you're going to march Worcester down here and say it worked in Worcester. Well, you know, let's face it. Fall River's not Worcester and Worcester's not Fall River. Things that work in Newton and Wellesley sometimes don't work. You have to look at the community, and you have to look at the impact on a community second. You know, I think the key here is that it's the second largest city in Massachusetts. They have a lot more people, but a lot more taxpayers, and it's a completely different demographic. And, you know, it, it's like apples and oranges. You can't, you know, if you go to an arbitration and you try to say, I deserve a certain amount of money or a certain benefit, you can't compare yourself with Boston or Worcester because it's apples and oranges. They're, they're too much larger. And you also can't compare yourself with Somerset and Westport. When you go and you look at things for, for equity, which is fairness, you have to create a universe of communities that are close to your size because you have to look at, you know, things that are, that are kind of equivalent. You know, they always say, let's compare, let's compare. Well, well let's, let's compare ourselves with, forget about Worcester, they're not close. Let's compare ourselves with Newton. 
there's only 2,000, there's only a 2,000 different uh, difference in population. And look at Newton, they have a lower tax rate, they have higher incomes. If we want to start patenting ourselves out of, out after a city, let's patent ourselves after the most successful city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I agree. And you know what's really funny? Let's talk about success, all right, and the success of this program. Other cities and towns across the region make a provision for the poor, the elderly, those people who really can't afford it. Now, remember, we're talking about 60-some-odd percent, 70 percent of the Fall River population. 80 percent is receiving some form of public assistance. And you know what the mayor said? We're not doing anything for them if they can't afford it. We're not doing anything for you. You're the citizen. And guess what? Your mayor says, we're not doing anything for you. Kathy Ann Rivera says, we can't do anything for you. Because if we start giving away free bags or reduced bags, guess what happens? The whole budget falls apart. <laughs> well, they can do something for us, and that is take all our money away. Yeah. And they don't care. As we said, let's, let's make comparisons. It's apples and oranges. Worcester doesn't have 70% of its population uh, getting some type of assistance. We don't, you know, we just don't have the ability to pay. That's why people say, well, you want to be like Newton? Yeah, we do. But it take, might take us a century to get there because Newton is, is a very affluent community. I think 70% of the people in that community have at least a bachelor's degree. Uh, but you look at that city and you even look at their budget. If you, got, if you want to do something... Go online and type in the city of Newton, get their web page, and look at their budget. It's startling to look at that budget. It actually makes sense. They have mission statements. They have it's this clarity. Each department, each department has to say what they did last year and accomplished and what they did this year, what their primary, what their goals are for this year. Not this city. All we do is run around and say, we're out of money, we're out of money because we spent too much money and now we've got to figure out ways that we can, we can take money from the people who can't afford it while we keep our lawyers, all our fat jobs. We have, we, we've got our treasurer and three assistants. They're not, they're still in the budget. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just incredible to see them walking in front of a city council with a budget without one political job cut, without one attempt to cut the fat out of this community. And their answer always is to take money from people who can't afford it. And as far as the mayor saying and Kathy Ann Verse saying, then they're going to do nothing for the poor, that shows that we have to get rid of this, this mayor because he just doesn't care. And, he just, and he's not from Fall River. He's never had to live under the conditions that the people in Fall River have. And I don't care what, what his, what his story with the violins about him growing up in the projects and stuff like that. But the fact is that he got city health care when he lived in the projects because we gave it to him. You know, and the worst part about all of this is that nobody thinks that anyone cares because all they're hearing from is neighborhood leaders are saying, this is great, this will increase recycling, this will do this, this will do that. But you know what? You're the people we want to hear. So I'm going to do something I've never done before on this show. I'm going to give you the mayor's phone number. Call him at 508-324-2600. Blast his phone lines. Make every phone call you can. Have all your friends make phone calls and tell them, you will not support pay as you throw. Or if you do want to support it, call them, blast the phone lines there, and say, we support pay as you throw. Let's do this, Mr. Mayor. Just remember the outcome of your decision because you're paying for your decisions now. You look at the city council, you look at the mayor, you look at what you've got, and we've got nothing but a train wreck. And that's because you voted for these monkeys. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, the question is, what next? We're going to get pay as you throw, they're going to run out of money again because this budget, again, is a, is a budget that isn't a budget. Again, it's a budget that's, that's based on money we don't have. That's not a budget. That's not a real budget, people. You can't make a budget based on, I'm going to hit the lottery next week. You know, my neighbor's going to give me money. 
We can't do this. So now we're saying that this, this city will crumble if we don't get pay as you throw. So what happens when we run out of money again? We're going to increase the cost of the bags. We're going to increase the taxes, increase the fees again. Look, 37% of the people in this city own property, only 37%. And almost double that own property in, in most of these other communities. You know, we're, we're killing this community. And then if we only have poor, how are they going to pay the fees? You know, and the sad part about it is it's not that we're killing this community. We've killed it. The, the previous administrations, right up to now, I mean, have really killed this community. Uh, the master plans. I don't know how many master plans we've had. 15, 20 of them. They're all sitting on a shelf in government center doing nothing. We paid millions of dollars for these master plans. And then they come out last year, the year before, and said, we have a new master plan. And we're talking about education, and we're talking about uh, jobs, and et cetera, et cetera. You know what? They didn't talk about anything. Do you know that they opened a brand new tourist trap in Massachusetts? Fitchburg. Fitchburg. Nothing in Fitchburg but a college. And they opened up a multi-million dollar tourist trap. It has indoor swimming pools, indoor water rides. It's called Great Wolf Lodge. I think it was called. Wolf Den, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Great Wolf Lodge in Fitchburg. Yeah. And it's an hour away if anyone's interested in going. They set out a, a great rate. You can stay at the lodge overnight. It's like $199 for a family of four. Um, it has restaurants, it has shopping, and it has entertainment, not only for the kids, but for the adults. We could have done that here in Fall River. We could have put something here, but our Fall River of Economic Destruction didn't even try to get them, didn't even talk to them, didn't even bring them down to look at what they could have had down here. Well, yeah, because the Office of Economic Disaster and Destruction, we should make it too decent. Yeah, we do. should. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, you do we have the answer? It's raise taxes. Raise taxes. And he said make that. it a better city. That's and right. he, Everybody laughs yeah. at us because of our tax law. And I did my commentary on that, which is absurd. But we don't mark it. You know, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to, Fall River's going to thrive now. We're going to put lights on the Braga Bridge. So it's like, okay, we're going we're gonna to light the way to paradise. Well, nobody stops in Fall River. We have nothing. We don't market anything because we're not marketable. I mean, people are not going to stop and look. Look, let's face it, people. We're 15 minutes away from Newport, one of the, the top tourist attractions in the Northeast. You know, we are 45 to minutes to an hour away from Boston, another big, the Cape, 30 minutes from the Cape. We have to have something that's unique. We're not gonna, we're not gonna you know, out, out finesse Newport. They have the mansions, they have the history, they have the America's Cup race history, all this stuff. They have a great waterfront. They have Sonny Von Bulow Cape. or Hatter. The Cape. <laughs> yeah, they have they had Sonny Von Bulow, right, and Klaus. Yeah. But, uh, but then you look at the Cape. We're 30 minutes from the Cape. What are you, what are you, you've got to bring people in with something that's viable. And, you know, they don't think. We had the carousel. Nobody's going to stop to ride wooden horses. Uh, we had the bounty, and we had all these ridiculous things. Why don't we try to do something that's actually feasible? I mean, I told somebody that, uh, a politician once, that why don't we try to do something like create a major soccer complex or a softball complex uh, to, to bring people in? I know it says, you people go, what? Why? Well, uh, my uh, fiance's daughter <clears throat> played softball on a traveling softball team <clears throat> and I got to go down to North Carolina where I was stationed in the military for a while <clears throat> to go to a week-long tournament and there were literally thousands of people down there thousands of people from all over the United States with their children who were playing softball and that complex was gigantic and guess what when we went down there, we had to get a motel. We had to go out to eat every day. And that area thrived with the, with, because they had these people down here. And I say, why not soccer? A lot of you people may not realize, Fall River had the best amateur soccer team in the world at one time. 
the Ponta Delgada team. Yep. Was the United States champs a few times. We have a great soccer history. A man named Bobby Gonsalves was one of he was a professional soccer player who played in Europe in the 30s and 40s. I mean, we have a tremendous and soccer. You go ah soccer. Well, the World Cup's coming, and soccer may not be a great professional level spectator sport in the United States, but every community has you know. Soccer moms. Uh, every community has. You, and the more affluent the community, the more soccer clubs they have. And if we did something like that, heaven forbid if we ran a major tournament here and took advantage of that, people might come. But no, let's try, let's try to, you know, let's try to you know, outdo the Cape and Newport, which was sandwiched between. It's absurd. They have no common sense. Our Office of Economic Disaster is, is just that, it's a total disaster. You know, it, it, and such a thing would be great. It tr truly would. The problem is we also don't have hotels. We have no serious hotels. And, you know, I already can hear it that the owners of the Quality Inn or the Comfort Inn in Swansea is going to say, oh, we're right here. And, you know, the Super 8 and the Comfort Inn up at the Industrial Park. But the problem is they're not full service hotels. Okay, I know that they had a small little league tournament in Somerset last year. Every room at every available hotel all around Fall River, and there were only two, three, four or five of them were full. Actually, there were six. They were staying as far out as um, almost Seekonk, and they were all full. There wasn't a room available anywhere. So even if you had something like that, where would they stay? Yeah, well, you it's know. a step. If we get that and we find that we have this kind of traffic, then somebody, guess what? Somebody might come to Fall River and build a hotel. Exactly. Wow, that's economic development. Yes, it is. Wow, but we, we can't, can't take the first we step. Can, we can't do that, though, yeah. because our, our office for 20 years has been given TIFs to companies that stay until a TIF's gone and leave. And then they leave. Because, no, we, we don't want to do something like that because, let's face it, a small little league tournament filled up hotels. If we had a if we had a venue with a major soccer, and people were, were going out to Providence to get a hotel, you don't think some hotel investor would say, "Hey, these people, this is a this is a good deal. We can actually build some restaurants and build some things, and we can feed off this." You know, right? And no, but God, you know, but what do we, what do we know? It's the same thing with the spaghetti ramps. They're all coming down, and they're going to build a four or eight lane boulevard right through the middle of, the, of what we now know as the Vall Street along the waterfront. Don't you think they would already have plans in place to say, we have a waterfront venue, we have a boardwalk that walks along, which I think is the biggest joke on the face of the earth, but it's there. Wouldn't you want to build business in that area? Wouldn't you want to have businesses start to look at that area and say, hey, you know what, I need uh, you know, a half an acre and I'll put a restaurant, a waterfront restaurant, where they can eat on the deck and, you know, it'll be seafood or, or whatever, and just have them all set up. You know, the biggest problem we have with our, our waterfront is that the group that I want to call the Nazis of Heritage State Park, otherwise known as the Friends of Heritage State Park, don't want to allow any businesses down there. If you have a lunch wagon, if you have you know, an ice cream truck, you can't go there because they control all the licensing for that. I think that's a big joke. Well, you're right because, you know, an eight lane highway doesn't create anything. No. As a matter of fact, the, one of the last eight lane roads I was in, uh, in the middle of a city, was in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, and look at where that is. And look how good <laughs> they're doing in Detroit. Because why? Because Detroit is. A war zone. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. It's d economically depressed. Actually, I stayed in downtown Detroit for a convention. There's an eight lane, four lanes on each side of traffic going right through the center of Detroit. And I stayed at a major hotel for the convention. And there's an area called Greek Town in Detroit, which is about three to five blocks away from all the major hotels. And when we got to the hotel, we were told that we had to take a cab to and from Greek Town because if you walked, you'd get mugged. And Greek Town was only safe because they hired 40 or 50 off-duty Detroit police 
to patrol it all the time. So when you have situations like that, you don't get a hell of a lot of tourism. No, you so don't. the fact is, as you said, you know, you can't just build a road. Lights and roads do not make economic development. Well, if we throw music in with the lights, we could have a disco up there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Disco go here and disco there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's the way it goes in Fall River. That's right. So, you know, the only thing I'm going to say for a commentary today is this. The power is in your hands right now. As you watch this program, pick up your phone. 508-324-2600. Let the mayor know whether you're for or against pay as you throw. And remember, his whole budget is based on the fact that you will pay for this. Whether it be in fines or bags, you will pay for this. And also, show up at the city council meeting. Make a noise. Let them know if you want this. Make, let them know if you don't want this. Otherwise, we're going to have people making a motion to adjourn <laughs> and then reconsider it afterwards. It's, it's ridiculous, but that's Fall River politics. You know, we don't do this just to look good. We don't do this because we want a place to vent or piss and moan. We do this because we truly care about Fall River. But I spoke to several landlords today, and they all said the same thing. If this goes into effect, they're dumping their properties. One of those landlords owns six tenement buildings, and he will sell that property. As a matter of fact, he's coming up from Florida just to talk about this and say very clearly he will dump his properties. I know a, a single-family homeowner who turned around and said, I will take my business and my family and I'll move somewhere else. He says, even if they have pay as you throw somewhere else, at least I'm getting what I'm paying for. My kids will be able to go to a school where they learn. My taxes won't go up every time you turn around because somebody decided to pay, pay for a $9,000 door. That's the important stuff. So remember, 508-324-2600. That's the line to the mayor's office. Give him a phone call. You'll never get him. He won't talk to you. Ann O'Neill Souza might run interference also. Or you'll get the poor girl on the phone who gives you information that she was told to give you, and then the administration says, we never said to say that. So remember, this is your city. It's going to go where you want it to go, not where these elected officials think it should go, which is in their pocket. Thanks for watching. We had a great show, and we'll have more for you on our next show. Have a great day. Remember who cares about you.